Hey guys, it's your lovely host here, Mistress Nightmare, and today we'll be reading a new Lapping Jack love story. It's called Love, Laughter, Insanity, Chapter 1, and it was written by X Xavier X. I'll leave the link to the story in the description box below for you guys if you want to read ahead before the next video. Also, please hit that like, comment, subscribe to this channel if you guys want more creepy pasta fanfictions out there. And another quick reminder, guys, there aren't going to be part two for the Yandere one-shots since they are considered one-shots. There's only a few part twos depending on the authors. So I will leave a message for them at you that you guys are asking for part two, but there is no guarantee that they'll do it. So with that said, let's get started. So where are we going today, Jack? An eight-year-old child with long black hair asked her best friend who was which pulling her with him. The colorful clown by whom she called Jack held a bright smile as he continued running, keeping pace slow enough for the young child to keep up with him. They jogged through the field covered with lush green grass and yellow and pink blue flowers here and there and the trees on both sides of them. Her, their hair blew softly in the wind as the town male looked back at her. We're almost there, Joanna, he explained, turning them down a rock pa cobbled path. Looking ahead, the young girl with blue eyes widened at, to saucers as she glimpsed of where they were heading to. Reaching the entryway, Jack stopped and turned to her, his large hands on his hips and triumphant glean in his eyes. Joanna peered up past him at the sign above the entry. It says and reads, Carnival. The large grin had grown across her pale skin face as she exactly stand on her tippy toes holding her hands up to her chest. A carnival? She jumped up and down. Jack nodded, laughing happily at his companion. Yeah, I tinkered with the machines a little and got them to work. Want to go play? He asked with a nod from the child. Her, He picked her up and helped her over the small gate, blocking them from the entrance. Once they ran in, the two ran forward, the little girl gasped and seen the lights of the carnival and the music hitting her ears. Jack, who turned everything on with a switch at once in front of the gate, sneaked behind her and gripped her underneath her arms, lifting her up into the air. Joanna giggled hysterically, hysterically before being set back down. Come on, let's go to the merry-go-round. Jack then grabbed the small girl's hand again and led her to their destination for the spinning ride. The sky began to turn an orange shade as the time reached 6.30. The two best friends got in done with the third round of the bumper cars. Joanna's laughter as they exit the ride. Jack had a sweet smile, seeing the girl so happy, her grin and giggles causing nothing but pure glee in him. But like always, something had to ruin it. Or someone. Hey, Joanna, a squeaky voice came from a blonde haired girl calling and turn towards them and looking at the front gate. Joanna turned where her name was being called. Her face brightened at the sight of all her friends. She ran towards them. Sam, Tara, John, Michael, Michael, Corner, Melina, Josh, what are you doing here? She squealed. Jack stand back, brows furred and a smile lowered at the sight of the new children. We were looking for you. What are you doing here? Is the carnival open again? Joanna shook her head, her hair swaying, and looked back and pointed at Jack, who was standing back, his eyes lightly glaring. No, Jack turned it on. Huh? Jack? 
holding a toothy grin in the colorful clown. He turned on the light, his light blue eyes, to one of them talking to him, blinking only out of his dagger-like glare. Nodding, he looked back at the other children, squinting dangerously at them again. Yeah, I did, he muttered, with a hint of poison evident in his voice. Joanna stared at him, cocking her head to the side, brows furrowed, wondering why he was angry all of a sudden. Every time when her friend, all her friends show up, he got this way. She did not understand why. Slowly looking away from him, she turned back to the other eight-year-old and smiled, crawling back on her cheeks. Do you want to play a game? They all looked at each other and then back at her, nodding excitedly beginning to crawl the, the small gate. Jack clenched his feet, fist as he could feel anger boil, begin to boil. Why must they always interrupt his fun with Joanna? Imagining images began to flow through his mind, images how he started to have some time ago. It had only greatly increased the more the other children were around. They were dark and bloody. All those damn children missing their limbs, their jaws, their, or their arms. Others without their eyes or giant holes in their chest. Every time Jack began to feel like this, he was like he was losing a part of himself. A shriveled happiness bubbled in him. He wasn't even sure of it. A tug on his long, lanky arm knocked him out of his thoughts to peer down at the black-haired girl who was slightly held slightly in fear looking up at him. Jack? Jack, are you okay? She asked, shaking his arm. She knew that the white and his irises were wondering what was wrong. The snow white faded back into the usual sky blue and the clown blink shaking his head, making his red, shaggy hair swish from one side to the other as he peered at the girl. Huh? Oh yeah, I'm fine, he answered, smirking at her. She furrowed her brows, unsure of what either or not he was all right, but slowly let it slide and nod. Okay, well, come on, everyone's heading to the bouncy house, she squealed and turned, heading towards the uh, after the other children jack just watched her go smiling after her but glaring to see the other children surrounding her and r running with his best friend towards the bouncy house jack feels his eyes twitch as he slowly followed the white once more flickered into his eyes and something began to snap in his mind but mom why do we have to go so far away? Joanna asked her mother two weeks later, watching as her mother packed up the child's suitcase. Because, Joanna, it's not safe here. With that murderer just last week of your little friend John and Carol, I don't think it's a good idea for you to be here, said the black-haired woman, answering zipping up the light blue bag and grabbing her daughter's hand. But mom, Jack, enough of this Jack business, Joanna. He is your imaginary friend and he will follow you there. Now come and get in to grandma's car. The adults interrupted as she continued pulling the child downstairs and outside. Reaching the child's grandmother's old van, Joanna's mother popped open the trunk and lifted the, the door, setting the bags that belonged to Joanna inside. Once in, she shut it tight and walked back to the door on the left, pulling it open for her daughter. Joanna stares frozen with tears filling her eyes at her mom, not wanting to leave everyone. Her mother gave her, gave her a sorrowful look, glance back and walked up to her child, kneeling down and about to her height and pulled Joanna into a tight embrace, shutting her eyes, wishing she didn't have to do this to let her go. I am sorry, Joanna, but is 
it's for the best. I love you. I love you too, mom. With that, the two release and Joanna's mom smiled at her and kissed her forehead, standing in her full height again. Joanna's hands are dripping on the side of her face as she climbed into the vehicle, shutting the door behind her and buckling up. With a hello to Joanna and her grandmother, began to drive out of the driveway and head their way. Joanna looked back and waved back to her parents, her father exiting the house, standing beside her mother. The adults waved goodbye. The girl's blue eyes traveled to the house, smiling at the familiar shadow in her window and waved at it, saying what she hoped wasn't their last goodbye to her best friend. Little did she know how much that would change would affect him in insanity.